Heldon, and what of him? Wherefrom did he hail? What were his motives, and how were they realized? The talk among the wild creatures on two legs and four usually mentioned an influential clan of bluebloods who traced their lineage back to pre-flood era Arctic islands. The Heldon name conjured up hatred and respect, disgust and pity the world over. The seafaring sect of the family amassed an obscene fortune, trading in subhumans, children and those with mental unpleasantries. Such commodities manned the blood mines and flesh fields without pay or even food. The other half of the Heldens focused on subsistence candy production in a poverty state. After his financial downfall, he gained a bit of notoriety in the spontaneous happenings which took place in the black midday coal clouds of the city or the pastoral valleys of the hinterlands. Writhing, cursing the heavens as he would be, Bruno held and attracted an audience over time. People who felt a basic desire to view his whirling and curling on a regular basis. But such a basis would never be. Bruno Heldon was many things, but something to set one's watch to? Hardly. He scurried about the globe constantly, spreading the messages given to him by the mountains, by the encroaching tides. Indeed, he had too much to occupy himself with to waste energy being clockworthy. And why would he be? What did he owe his admirers? Though they inwardly sung his praises, outwardly, in the public manner Bruno held and experienced them in, their interest in his performances could be considered as passing as the <coughs> nearby rivers of blood. Look upon my hands, gentlemen. What more need I say? Disenchanted by the rise he had not gotten, seemingly, out of his surrounding humans, he abandoned all attempts at a subjective sort of existence and decided that instruction in the facts and figures, the yes and no, the is and never shall be world of scientific pursuits was the path fate had laid out for him. Twas here that we met, both searching for things that do not exist.